the entire point of going into a different age and why you would call it a different technological age is it breaks all of our intuitions. Yeah. And one of the, the most interesting ones that I think is completely broken is we keep thinking of each technology as displacing work. One of the things that's probably going to happen is we will probably create more jobs for people than uh, we have people. There will suddenly be a um, lack of supply of people to do things. And I'll give you a, a concrete example. It used to be that no one would have a, a, a graphic in, in their articles, their random news articles. But now it's so easy to create one. Most articles have some sort of graphic, yeah. right? Most pod uh, or most uh, blog posts have a, a, an article. For sure, yeah. And people probably spend more hours in, you know, overall as human beings generating these because it is so easy to generate them. And this is called Jevons' paradox. And this was noticed in the 1860s by someone writing a treatise on coal, where what he realized was every time steam engines got more efficient, uh, um, rather than buying less coal, people bought more coal. So yeah. steam engines get more. Why are they buying more coal? Well, OPEX goes down. More things go into the money. People do more things, right? And so what will probably happen is with most of the things that generative AI makes easy, you will actually see an increase in human activity on that. And there's always going to be someone who's going to be more entrepreneurial and figure out a way to monetize that, get a whole bunch of people working on it. So I expect- I, I, haven't, I haven't heard of Jebin's paradox before. Is that kind of like a similar thing could be in- for, for the layman might be like, okay, they, they made the highway from two lanes to three, but the traffic is still just as bad because more people drive on it or. That's, that's a good way to think of it. Yeah. Or price okay. elasticity is another way to say it. Yeah. Price. Okay. Got it. That makes sense. Um, and, and in, in this kind of new world, like what, if, if you had a bet on companies, like what types of companies do you think have the biggest advantages and, um, and in this kind of more future world. I'm going to shift that one a little bit. I'm going sure. to say there are going to be companies that are definitely going to be successful in this. And then there's going to be companies that might be, and it's going to be almost impossible to predict who, but they might be even more successful than those other companies. When the information age came along, it was a great time to be in um, material production for paper. Now, which newspapers were going to succeed? Eh, I don't know. Don't know how that works yet, right? So this is a picks and shovels thing where we know we're going to need energy. We know that we're going to need, um, uh, we know we'll need more data, right? That's going to be a thing. But we're also going to need more compute. But these are the picks and shovels of it. Then there's going to be which generative AI company is going to be the next Google, which one's going to be the next Microsoft. Um, but let's, you know, like, let's say we in... I don't know, airlines or something. Is it just like some airlines are going to do super well and some airlines are not going to do well because they're going to, some airlines will adopt it faster than others? Or do you think like all airlines get wiped out or all airlines do better? Uh, and, and you don't literally mean airlines. You mean... Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Mean, it could be anything. Healthcare, trucking, just go down your list of whatever industry okay. that's this. I, 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 will, I will say this much. Every single industry will be disrupted by generative AI. Uh, we've never had a technology that allowed us to- and more, you think, faster than the information age? Much. It will disrupt, okay. Much, much, much. Because, um, so, well, it, there was a recent study uh, where doctors competed against AIs to make diagnoses. And th the fascinating part about this was- I, you, 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 you're not going to be too surprised if I say the AI outperformed the human being given the same data. Um, so we're probably going to see AI involved in sort of diagnostic medicine. I, I just yeah. don't see how that doesn't happen. And ironically, it'll be a little slower for surgery, even though we already have robots for surgery. But, but diagnoses, you can just feed the data. It could already do better. The shocking part was when they paired a human doctor with the AI, the uh, results were worse than just having the AI give a diagnosis. 
And th this was this is true in chess too, right? It used to be a human with the AI was better than the AI. And then very quickly, the AI was clearly better than the human plus the AI because the human would like overrule it and stuff. Yeah. And, and what I expect is we'll get to a point where medicine becomes so consistent that if you go in and you don't get a common issue treated, that will be malpractice as opposed to you just did something egregiously wrong. 